So let us look at the following example that will deal with calculating the frequency of a sound wave using the Doppler effect. So let's begin. Suppose a bat travels toward the moth with a velocity of 10 meters per second while the moth travels toward the bat with a velocity of 5 meters per second. The bat emits a sound wave with a frequency of 60 kilohertz. Using that information and assuming the temperature of the air is 25 degrees Celsius, what is the frequency of the sound wave detected by the moth and by the bat after the sound wave reflects off of the moth and returns back to the bat? So let's begin with part A. So in part A, our bat is traveling towards the moth and our moth is traveling towards the bat. Now we treat the bat as the source because the bat creates the sound wave. And since we want to calculate the frequency that the moth observes, we treat the moth as the observer. So we use the following equation to calculate the perceived frequency frequency that is observed by the moth. So F prime is equal to F, our frequency of the sound wave given, multiplied by the following ratio. So this is positive and this is negative because these two objects are traveling towards one another. If they were traveling uh, away from one another, this would be negative and this would be positive. So. The velocity of the sound is, well, because the temperature of the air is 25 degrees Celsius, uh, to calculate the V sound, we simply add 331 plus 0.6 times 25 degrees Celsius, and we get a value of 346 meters per second. So V sound is 346 meters per second. The velocity of the observer, well, the moth is the observer and is traveling with a velocity of 5 meters per second. So the observer is 5 meters per second. While the V source is the velocity of the bat, which is given to be 10 meters per second. So 346 plus 5 divided by 346 minus 10, the meters per second cancel, and we get a quantity quantity of approximately 62.7 kilohertz is the frequency that is detected by the moth. Now let's move to part B. What is the frequency of the sound wave detected by the bat after it reflects off of the moth and travels back to the bat? So once the wave reflects off of the moth, it's as if the moth is actually emitting that sound wave. So that means we now treat the bat as the observer and the moth as our source that's creating that sound. So we have the following picture. Notice we still have to use this equation because the two objects are traveling toward one another. So that means we use a positive and a negative on the bottom. So our frequency is 60 kilohertz and we multiply by 346 meters per second and notice now the velocity of the observer is no longer 5 meters per second but it's 10 meters per second because the observer is our bat. So this is 10 meters per second and this is 5 meters per second because the velocity of the source of the moth is given to be 5 meters per second. So we plug that into our equation and we get approximately 62.6 kilohertz. Notice these two frequencies are different. The frequency that is perceived by the bat when the sound wave reflects is lower than the frequency that is perceived by the moth 